So I've come down to the Eternal Bridge here in Aarhus and I'm after a photo that I've had on my mind for a couple of months and it's a very fine artsy long exposure photograph and the reason why I want to make it as a long exposure is that the concept is that we have the Eternal Bridge here in front of me and then a person standing all the way out in the end and looking out into the horizon and the specific reason why I'm here now is because we have like really mucky ugh, weather so you can actually hardly see the horizon you can see somewhere where it stops and I think I will have to, to use some gradient filters uh, to, to ease out the horizon out there in the end but I want to like have that person stand here look out into eternity on the bridge of eternity or whatever we call it in English the uh, Nuendelige Bro in Danish and then just have like the water completely smoothed out so it's as if like time is standing still or time is always or yeah you know just very simple very stylistic very fine artsy photograph So my biggest issues here is definitely other human beings on the bridge because as you can see it's just like a big round pier going all the way around and just having one person walking on the bridge sets it all in motion and I guess that's luckily where the weather is on my side today because there's not a lot of people here so if I time it right I can actually have like 15 or 30 seconds where there's nobody on the bridge at all and I can get my shot. The hard part is walking into the scene and be my own model, uh, leaving the camera behind, you know, probably nothing going to happen, but it's an issue when you are in a city that of course something can happen or some idiot can come and tip it over because it's literally, yeah, next to the water. So yeah, there's a few issues that comes with this, uh, but I think I can manage. So I can just uh, talk you through the composition and it's very very simple as you can see here on the back of my camera. So I have the bridge going around here and in and I make sure that this line here goes directly out at the diagonal. And besides that as you can see with people here in the background it is super super simple. I'm just hoping that the weather will be a little bit more on my side but else as I said I will use some gradient filter to, uh, to remove the horizon. So yeah, just straight on into the scene, very much three-dimensionality with having the bridge here in front being fairly big and then leading into the photo. I'm shooting at 24 millimeter, so it's fairly wide angle. So I can just walk you through the settings very, very fast to make one of these long exposures. This is very, very simple. Um, I'm an aperture priority, but you can also do manual, whatever pleases you. And I'm just going for f16, so I have everything in focus from back to front. I focus three or four meters into the scene, super simple. ISO 50, just as low ISO as possible. This is my extended ISO, uh, so I can actually have uh, double the shutter speed. And for the shutter speed, I've had to put on a neutral density filter. I'm using the variable neutral density filter from K and F Concept. They have a few different versions. I think this is like four to eight stops or something like that. And that gives me a shutter speed of 15 seconds, which is enough to smooth out the water. And if it's not enough, I can just take several exposures and, and put them together afterwards. Uh, but I think 15 seconds ought to be enough. When I've dialed in all my settings, I change my camera to the intervalometer and then I just set it for like 20 seconds uh, until it starts shooting and then it just shoots it, it forces the camera to shoot at ISO 100 so then I just get several photos with eight seconds or six seconds and then I just walk into the scene and stand there for four or five shots ish uh, and in this case I actually want to move a little bit around as to make the person standing there a bit more anonymous so it's not just me but you know like a little bit like you know walking uh, waving uh, in in time i will make one sharp and then i will make a few where i'm waving a little bit so i think the concept is fairly clear settings easy and yeah yeah he'll take it so nice people asked if they can 
just walk by. And of course, like this is part of the game for landscape photographers. Uh, we wait until the landscape is clear for us. So as you maybe figured out, this is a blended photo. I managed to get two 15 second photos without people on the bridge as to get smooth water. These two photos are blended in Photoshop to smooth the water even more. If I had used a 10 stop filter, I would of course have been able to skip this step as I would have been able to get a 30 second exposure instead. After the initial blending, I added three blended photos of myself as to not have a tech sharp person on the pier. In the end, I didn't get the smooth horizon I was after and the gradient filter editing didn't work to remove it. I might have to return in more foggy or even more rainy conditions to get my original idea, but I actually also like this version with the horizon line. I think it still has that ethereal and moody look and maybe even better as the person is looking towards the horizon or towards the edge. Who knows? I also feel that the smoothed out person adds even more mystery to the image. I rarely make true black and white photos, but in this case I had envisioned it as either monochrome or true black and white, so I simply went with black and white to complement the moody vision. In this case, I do not think colors would have improved the image. While walking back from my posing, my camera kept shooting and I got a few photos with a long exposed version of myself. I really like what came from it, so I purposely gave it a few more tries and this is my final version. I'm not sure, but I might actually like this photo more than the original idea. They are very different in their expression and it is fascinating how two photos that have so many characteristics in common can be so different. This one is arguably even more moody than the first and it is maybe more precise to describe it as haunting. Let me know down in the comments which one you prefer. It's a really long time since I've made like a real long exposure um, in, in, in my photos and it's usually something I don't really do anymore when it comes to my landscape photographs for waterfalls and seascapes and it's mainly just because I really want to catch that motion but in this particular case it made a lot of sense for me to just smooth it all out. It gives uh, a very ethereal look to it so it kind of it's hard to see if you're actually at the sea as landscape photographers we know that you're probably at the sea or, or if you're up in the sky or something like that it's a uh, gives a very ethereal look to it so I would say that you know very long long exposures as long as you do them with intent uh, it makes complete sense to really just smooth out everything so if you want to learn more about composition in landscape photography, be sure to check out my two ebooks. I cover many different topics in both of them. 
The first one is 114 pages long, the next one is 149 pages long, so there is a lot to dig into. I have designed them so they are very easy to read and there are tons of examples to go along with what I talk about. So they should be fairly easy to understand and the concepts in them are super easy to understand. So I hope you enjoyed this little uh, mini excursion tutorial thing on a long exposure fine art landscape photography. Not so much landscape photography. But if you enjoyed the video, as always, I would highly appreciate both a like and a comment.